Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines this evening. Weak global markets royal the sentiment on the Lal Street. The Sensex declines over 600 points. Nifty loses over 200 points. The rupee weakens by more than 50 paise, moving closer to the 82 mark against the dollar. After a public backlash and market turbulence, the British government withdraws a proposed tax cut for the super-rich. New Prime Minister Liz Truss makes a U-turn on the back of consistent opposition. Credit Suisse shares plunge due to capital concerns even after the CEO's assurance over its balance sheet strength. The bank is reportedly in talks with investors and is also considering asset sales to shore up capital. Credit Suisse shares are down 60% since the start of the year. Process, the parent company of fintech major PayU, scraps the proposed acquisition of Buildesk for $4.7 billion, saying certain conditions were not fulfilled before the September 30th deadline. The deal would have been the second largest in India's internet economy and would have created the country's largest online payment entity. Automobile sales in September threw up a mixed bag. Car sales remain strong with Maruti m and and Tata Motors beating expectations. But domestic two-wheeler sales remain under pressure and exports are also struggling. The union government moves to fast-track disinvestment likely to invite expressions of interest for IDBI Bank by the 15th of October. Sources also say 30 entities have shown interest in Hotel Ashok including hospitality bigwigs like Hyatt, Taj, ITC, Leela, Hilton among others. That's an exclusive. India's credit card issuance growth rate declines for the first time in 14 months. This after an RBI order asking banks not to classify cards that are inactive. HDFC Bank is growing its market share over credit card spends in the last six months. RBI, SBI cards has arrested the decline, but ICICI Bank has lost market share. A seven-year-old boy dies after an e-scooter allegedly explodes while charging in Versailles on the outskirts of Mumbai. Police say the battery was removed from the scooter for overnight charging, resulting in overheating and a short circuit which led to an explosion. Ukraine's President Zelensky says his troops are making more gains in Russian-occupied Kherson. Ukraine is also in full control of Lyman, a key logistics hub in the eastern region after Russian troops retreated. Reality TV star and celebrity influencer Kim Kardashian agrees to pay $1.2 million to the U.S. securities regulator. She was charged for promoting Ethereum Max on her Instagram page. The Indian Air Force inducts the first made in India light combat helicopter Prachan. The chopper was designed and developed by Hindustan Aeronautics. Well, let's start with the market action for the day. Weak global sentiment playing spoiled sport as the stock markets came under pressure. So we saw the Sensex down over 600 points and the Nifty lost over 200 points. With this decline, all the gains that were made on Friday stand reversed. The Nifty Bank was the worst hit as financials led the decline. All sectoral indices ended in the red except for the Pharma Index. That's the equity market action and on to the currency market. The Indian rupee also weakened against the dollar today. In fact, the rupee weakened more than 50 paise as the dollar gained strength in trade. One US dollar is now almost worth 82 rupees. A strong dollar has been rattling currencies around the world. The rupee, though, has performed relatively better compared to its peers. And here's another reason why the Lal Street may have come under pressure. Crude oil prices are rising once again. Both Brent and Limex are up over 4% as OPEC nations consider yet another cut to production. On Wednesday, OPEC will mull cutting output by a million barrels per day. And this is driving oil prices higher across the world. So this is going to be something to watch out for. But the big international story, just 24 hours ago, British Prime Minister Liz Truss said, and I quote, she's absolutely committed to the proposed tax cut. But today, a U-turn. The British government has reversed its decision to cut the topmost tax rate from 45% to 40%. And the move comes after widespread backlash and market turmoil. In fact, the International Monetary Fund had warned that the tax cuts will increase inequality. Arabel Gumed joins us now with more. Arabel, the tax cut reversal, uh, embarrassing for the government. Early this morning, we got word then that the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, that being the Finance Minister, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng, had decided to reverse his decision that he had set forth on uh, September the 23rd, which was to cancel and abolish, as he had put it, that upper tax rate uh, of 45%, which of course impacted the wealthy. 
today doing away with the abolishing of that uh, top tax bracket and instead saying that it had become a distraction to what he believes was still a great growth plan for the UK economy. Markets have stabilized somewhat on the back of that. We saw the pound early this morning uh, gain around seven tenths of a percent. That strength perhaps weakening off just a little bit. We even saw uh, p predictions on interest rates perhaps not set to hit that six percent mark and instead hit around 5.5 to 5.75. It doesn't take away, of course, that impact on the gear market where the BOE, the Bank of England, has indeed intervened and said that they will throw around £5 billion per day to uh, try and shore up that guilt market. So questions around stability still at the fore. Arabil, many thanks for joining us. Uh, that is the big story, the U-turn by the UK government. Now, shares of Swiss lender Credit Suisse plunging across global markets amidst rising concerns over its deteriorating financial health. The stock tanked even after the CEO reassured clients and employees about Credit Suisse's liquidity and financial position. The bank's credit default swap prices jumped to its highest level rising to 293 basis points from 55 basis points at the start of the year. Investors fear if there will be a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis. Leslie Picker is here with more. Leslie. The rumor mill kicked off in earnest with a report about a week and a half ago saying the firm was sounding out investors about a capital raise. That news, although disputed by sources close to the firm, sent the stock to a record low, and it's fallen almost every day since, now significantly lower than $4 a share. The firm sent out a press release a week ago saying it's on track with asset sales and divestitures, which would help raise cash without diluting shareholders. Uh, on Friday, CEO Ulrich Corner sent out an internal memo obtained by CNBC where he tried to comfort employees and, uh, amid a slumping stock price and, quote, uncertainty and speculation. He said, quote, I trust that you are not confusing our day-to-day -day stock price performance with the strong capital base and liquidity position of the bank. So is Credit Suisse having its Lehman moment? Well, Credit Suisse's common equity tier one ratio at the end of Q2 was 13.5%. That's higher than most U.S. banking peers. I'm told there's genuine interest in its securities pro securitized product unit, which could shore up some capital. However, the firm is sitting, sitting on hundreds of millions of dollars in losses from leveraged buyout-related debt that the market won't absorb amid this current risk-off sentiment. And it's impossible from the outside to get a minute-by-minute -minute account of the true picture of risk on its balance sheets. Leslie, appreciate you joining us. More global news. British telecom major Vodafone PLC has confirmed that it is in discussion with Hutchison for a potential merger of Vodafone UK and 3 UK. Vodafone will own 51% of the combined business, while CK Hutchison will own 49%. Vodafone is currently third in the pecking order in the UK. Behind British Telecom and Virgin Mobile, Hutchison is the fourth largest operator in the UK. But a merger between Vodafone and Hutchison will create Britain's biggest mobile operator. So that's a proposed merger in the making, confirmed there by Vodafone. But of course, this is specific to the UK market. Celebrity influencer Kim Kardashian will pay $1.26 million to settle SEC allegations that she broke U.S. law by touting a crypto token without disclosing her earnings from the promotion. Kardashian has agreed to pay the penalty for promoting Ethereum Max on her Instagram page. In an interview with CNBC SEC chairman Gary Gensler and Kim said Kim Kardashian broke the law, but he refused to comment if other celebrities will face similar charges. If you were to see an ad, and I think we all did during the Super Bowl, for example, with Matt Damon around crypto, um, I don't know if in the fine print of that ad it said how much he was being paid personally to promote that. Would that be something that would be required? Uh, I, I'm not going to get into it, Andrew. I understand the question. I'm not going to get into any other specific circumstances, but it always depends on the facts and the circumstances. In this particular case, this is about an influencer, a high-profile celebrity, on their Instagram site putting out a tout for this token Ethereum Max, which is a security right. uh, we've determined. And so those are the facts and circumstances here. 
Well, that is the SEC chief there. And remember, even in India, the Consumer Affairs Ministry has now put out guidelines uh, that social media influencers will need to follow, which basically means the topmost priority will be to disclose any arrangement with a potential advertiser. So if you're advertising a brand, then you need to disclose whether you're being paid or not. And that is part of the guidelines that the Consumer Affairs Ministry has put up for circulation at this point in time. Process, the parent company of fintech major PayU, has scrapped its mega $4.7 billion acquisition of Buildesk, saying that certain conditions were not fulfilled. These conditions were to be fulfilled before the September 30th deadline, which was the long stop date. The deal would have been the second largest in India's internet economy and would have created the country's largest online payments entity. Shruti is here with more details. Shruti, a mega deal that was on the table, but now no longer. Well, that's right. Process, the global investment arm of South African multinational NASPERS, has terminated its $4.7 billion deal to acquire Indian payments gateway firm Buildesk through its Indian subsidiary PayU Payments. Now, as per a statement issued by Process, and I quote, certain conditions precedent were not fulfilled by the 30 September 2022 long stop date, and the agreement has terminated automatically in accordance with its terms, and accordingly, the proposed transaction will not be implemented. Implemented, end of quote. Now, a quick background. The deal was announced by Process on August 31st, 2021. The acquisition was to be the country's second largest internet deal after Walmart acquired Flipkart in 2018. Now, it would have raised the company's total investment in India to $10 billion. The Competition Commission of India approved the deal on September 5th after weeks of delays and additional queries. Now, founded in 2000 by M.N. Srinivasu, Ajay Kaushal and Karthi Ganpati, Biltes focuses on making accepting and collecting payments. As per industry estimates, the builders enjoys a 25 to 30 percent market share in the online payment aggregator space, which is followed by Razorpay, which is at 15 to 20 percent. And PayU is the third largest player with a share of 10 to 15 percent. Shruti, many thanks for joining us. So that is the end of the PayU build this deal. India's factory growth slowed to a three-month low in September but remained in expansion territory. The S&P Global India Manufacturing PMI coming in at 55.1. The S&P report states that manufacturing PMI was in expansion for the 15th month in a row. A reading above 50 indicates expansion. Passenger vehicle makers have seen strong sales in September. M&M, Tata Motors and Maruti registering sales growth between 85 to 129 percent on a yearly basis. Two-wheeler exports, though under pressure, the farm equipment segment has witnessed a sharp improvement. Another fatal incident involving an electric vehicle fire. A seven-year-old boy died after an e-scooter exploded while charging in Vasai on the outskirts of Mumbai. The police say the battery was removed from the scooter for overnight charging and could have resulted in overheating and a short circuit, which led to an explosion. The e-scooter belonged to a company called Bat RE Electric Mobility. It's a Rajasthan-based entity. The big development from the privatization and asset monetization space, the union government will invite expressions of interest for IDBI Bank's privatization by the 15th of this month. That's not all. Hotel Ashok's monetization will come up for cabinet approval as well. Sapna Das joins us with more on both these exclusive stories. Sapna. Well, first of all, on IDBI Bank stake sale, we are given to understand that the government will be definitely be in a position to invite the EUIs for the bank stake sale by October 15. In fact, the expectation has been that they could be ready at least this week itself. Uh, however, if not this week, then by October 15, definitely the UIs for RBI bank stake sale will be in. That's one. Second, importantly enough on uh, Hotel Ashok, we are given to understand that maybe the government would be in a position to make a presentation to the core group of secretaries as far as the monetization plan is concerned. Once that is done, uh, the cabinet, the work on the cabinet vote will start. So maybe by around December or uh, November, December or uh, before the uh, calendar year ends, maybe the cabinet approval will be in for Hotel Ashok's monetization plan. Uh, you know, we are also given to understand that the number of entities has grown substantially. 22 odd entities were there earlier who had shown interest in Hotel Ashok's roadshow. Uh, we are given to understand the number now stands at 30 odd plus and it includes uh, big players like uh, ITC and HAT, uh, apart from the names which are already doing the rounds. Uh, but significantly enough, we are also given to understand that the timelines for completion of Hotel Ashok's monetization uh, are pretty, uh, you know, are pretty uh, tight in the sense that they will not be. Re uh, this monetization plan is not really going to uh, take off in a big way uh, 
uh, till India's G20 presidency is over, because at that point in time, India is going to require uh, all of its iconic hotels to be ready and available for uh, foreign dignitaries. So keeping all of this in mind, it just could be possible that the actual handover of the hotel shop could start after the G20 presidency is over sometime next year. This is what we are given to understand. But in the meanwhile, the government is going to keep uh, its entire plan ready in terms of not just the CDD presentation, but also in terms of the cabinet approval and what shape and form uh, you know, this is going to uh, take place. Sapna, many thanks for joining us. Kirit Parikh, the head of the government-appointed panel tasked with reviewing the pricing formula for domestic natural gas, told CNBC TV 18 exclusively that India may have to cut down on gas consumption if LNG prices see a sharp spike. He said the price of gas for fertilizer companies will be prioritized for allocation. Government hiked the prices of natural gas by 40% to a record high on Friday. Uh, many import of LNG taking place in the country is based on a long-term contract. And the pr average price of imports in India is, is, is substantially below what the spot prices in international market is. And obviously, if the international market prices go up, then we have to decrease the consumption of this, reduce the consumption of this, because you cannot expect the government that is people, uh, uh, the general public, bear the cost of this price for few who use this gas. Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi said it was disappointed with the competent authority's order allowing the enforcement directory to freeze its assets worth over 5,500 crores. The company says that 84% of the amount seized was royalty payments to Qualcomm for tech without which their tech wouldn't work in India. The mobile manufacturer also maintained that all royalty payments were made through RBI-approved channels. Here's another exclusive. The Customs Department is looking into tax evasion by some Indian companies for allegedly importing goods from China and not paying the applicable tax by allegedly misusing the FTA route. Sources say the Customs Department found these companies importing goods from China and gaming rules of origin norms, misusing the FTA route by importing via Southeast Asian countries. Credit card issuance has declined month on month for the first time in 14 months, and this is largely attributed to RBI's new guidelines directing issuers to deactivate the cards that have remained inactive for a year. HDFC Bank continues to be the leader with the highest market share in spends over the last few months, followed by Axis Bank. Amongst large players, ICICI Bank, SBI Cards and Indusind Bank have seen a decline in spends in market share. Time now for us to bring you a CNBC TV 18 special report. Horrors of invasion loom large over the Ukrainian town of Kharkiv. Our colleague Sanjay Suri visits the Kharkiv War Memorial, built in remembrance of those who laid down their lives to defend the city. Ukraine continues to reclaim more territories. President Zelensky has declared the eastern town of Lyman as a fully cleared of Russian forces. Russia was using the city as a transport and logistics hub. The recapture of this town is a major blow for Russian President Putin following his annexation of the key Ukrainian regions. NATO Secretary General has said that this victory demonstrates Ukraine's capability to ward off Russian troops and the impact of advanced Western nations on the conflict. Our colleague Sanjay Suri is in Ukraine. He reports from war-torn Kharkiv, where locals are picking up the pieces and remembering those who laid down their lives to defend their city. This year behind is a memorial to those who died fighting and to those still fighting for Ukraine, fighting bloody battles and very difficult battles. And beneath that memorial, all around it, the sandbags and the flowers between them say just about everything that needs to be said about Kharkiv today. This has become the iconic memorial around Ukraine today. A high pile of sandbags within a black shroud. It is a picture of soldiers fighting and dying. It is the emblem of Ukraine itself. Consider the human or inhuman environment in which these flowers grow in Kharkiv and all around Ukraine really. It's the season of war, not flowers. Signs of destruction are all around. The UN has counted 5,996 civilian deaths till September the 25th, with 8,848 injured, but with an indication that the number of dead and injured could be much higher. The worst by far has been 
in Kharkiv where these flowers are blooming. Not many people walk by these flowers anymore or stop to look at them. Most people who lived around them have left. No tourist steps by to set eyes on them. But quite obviously, a lot of Kharkiv's gardeners have not left and they are no more immune to missiles than anyone else. And you see them all around those buildings that have been bombed. Maybe because that's where we are and that's where we are wandering. Or is it the gardener's answer to Putin? Or maybe even if we can be allowed an excessively romantic thought, the flowers themselves are saying something. Our colleague Sanjay Suri from Kharkiv. The Indian Air Force has inducted the first Made in India combat helicopter into its fleet. The new chopper was designed and developed by Hindustan Aeronautics and, and has been named Prachand. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh went on a sortie today. Five years ago, CNBC TV 18 was at the Hindustan Aeronautics base in Bengaluru, where we had a chance to have a glimpse at the chopper. Take a look. I am inside the cockpit of a light combat helicopter. As you can see, this cockpit is unlike uh, cockpits of other helicopters. It's much more smaller. In fact, uh, it's like uh, the cockpit of a fighter aircraft. And all displays that you can see are, are, are in the digital mode. Moreover, what's interesting about this aircraft is that it's in tandem seating, which means the main pilot sits uh, in the front, uh, the co-pilot sits in the back, uh, and he's the one who actually controls uh, the weapon systems uh, of this aircraft. Craft, uh, which includes a gun in the, in the turret uh, as well as uh, in the back uh, there are facilities to carry uh, missiles and bombs. Uh, this uh, helicopter can carry bombs up to a height of uh, 20,000 feet which is unprecedented. No other combat helicopter can carry bombs to this height. Well, that's the Prachand and that is uh, CNBC TV 18 at HAL in 2017. And before we laugh, let's talk about protein. It's the latest food fad and it's become the hottest selling point for everything from breakfast bars to even idli and dosa batter. Shilpa Rani Peter reports that FMCG companies are certain it's more than just a passing fancy and are jumping onto the protein bandwagon. First, fitness was all about sugar-free. Then it was fat-free and oil-free. Then it was low-carb and after that gluten-free. And now it's all about protein-rich. The Indian Council of Medical Research recommends that an average adult consume 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per kilo of their body weight daily. And in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, health-conscious Indians are increasingly looking to include protein in their diet. Literally, I would say uh, protein category would have grown uh, literally 2.5 to 3x on our platform in the last two to three, uh, uh, pre-COVID versus now overall. So there's a significant scale up uh, and this is uh, led by uh, more and more uh, new consumers sort of adopting protein products. So protein, what used to be more confined to gym usage, uh, has definitely moved to mainstream consumers. The health foods industry estimates that India's 3,000 to 4,000 crore rupee protein market will grow 15 to 20 percent over the next few years. And that's a number that's making heads turn. So estimates suggest that the protein market is about 3,000 crores, the protein supplements markets, and uh, that is slated to grow about 15 to 20 percent over the next few years. Within that, uh, plant protein, which is where we're entering with GoFit, that is a smaller segment. So it's about 500 odd, uh, but it's nascent and uh, faster growing. The food fat is no longer just eggs or paneer or chicken or protein shakes. With established FMCG players ramping up their presence and offerings, the market is being flooded with high protein snacks and beverages from chips to chocolates, from coffee to sodas to biscuits and buttermilk. Even niche players like Muscle Blaze, Oziva and MyProtein want a taste and more are queuing up. We are coming here with an intent of playing the full hawk. So today we have two brands. We have Safola at one end, which through meal maker Soya Chunk is talking to the mass of India, is available in the basic format in which it gets consumed in the center of the plate and is actually made available to you next door at a price point of rupees 10. For people who are discerning, who are health conscious, they are looking for products which can add different nutrition in a different formats, we have created this brand called Fitify. But getting the pricing right is just one challenge. 
A big hurdle, the industry says, that there is still some discomfort in taking proactive nutrition. The other is that there is a lot of misinformation around consuming protein supplements. But the pricing companies say will not be a problem as the movement picks up steam. And with innovation and consumer education, healthy profits are on the cards. In Mumbai, Shilpa Rani Peta. And that's it on this edition of India Business Hour. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned. The news continues on CNBC TV 18.